What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Genesis League sports and Genesis League goals content today. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, guys, well, we had a town hall today. We're usually getting these about once a month now, so I would expect the next one to come in sometime in July, probably mid-July. Uh, but once again, just to remind you that this is a five biggest takeaways. It's not a summary. It's just the five things that kind of stuck out to me the most from this town hall. And there were a lot. You can actually see here, I have more than five items. And I, I decided instead of doing like five items and then some bonus things at the bottom, I would just try to group them in or organize them in, you know, the most, uh, the way that made the most sense. And I came up with seven items. So sorry, the title was a lie. It's not five, it's seven, but we're going to jump right in. And uh, let's actually start with the bad news first. Okay. The launch of the game. We were told about a month ago, mid-May, that they were hoping to get it out within the next six to eight weeks. That put us at the end of June, early July. Well, here we are. It's mid-June. I know a lot of people were excited, hoping that we get something in the next two weeks to four weeks. And uh, we're being told that we're probably going to be still two months out from launch. So that puts us at mid-August now. And the age of the Phoenix, which is kind of the splinter lens, uh, the company's uh, agile sprint, uh, sprint age or like 10 week sprints, that is actually going to end, I believe, August 1st or August 2nd. So I think the goal is still to get it out within this sprint. So there's a chance that it happens in six weeks or by the end of July. Uh, but they are extending this and saying now by the end of uh, by the or sorry, by mid August. And actually, Aggie was even asking Chicklet, you know, can can we say maybe by the end of August? And she was even still hesitant to uh, to commit to that. So I don't know where things are at, but it doesn't sound, you know, it just doesn't sound like we're going to get it anytime soon, although there was progress being made. Uh, the other big thing with launch with the launch is that rewards will actually not be live when the game launches. And I I'm actually OK with that. I mean, I wanted there to be a full game, but I can understand the team wanting to have this kind of like beta time uh, or, you know, I guess semi beta version of the game out in order to make sure that everything's working and there's no exploits to get like a bunch of tokens or whatever the case is. So I hope that period doesn't last very long. In my opinion, it shouldn't last more than two weeks, uh, which would be like a sprint for the team in case they need to go in and make any changes. They can be monitoring it. But that's that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. I, that's my hope of where we can go. But I am not a developer. I am not a QA person. I am not anything. I am just a fan that is very, very much excited about when this game will be out. And uh, I, I got to say that this time Town Hall, all in all, made me actually really excited. There's a lot of really fun things that we're going to dive into. So number two, you can see here, gameplay demo. This was early on in the Town Hall. So if you want to go and check it out, uh, there is a live stream or I guess a recorded live stream on the GLG YouTube channel. And yes, there is a separate GLG YouTube channel. The gameplay demos within the first couple of minutes. It's one of the first things that, that they do. So they get to show Z was on there showing how the game works. It's still very rudimentary, but now you got the players, you have a, a better kind of user interface. It's not all fancy. And whenever there's a goal, we want more of the kind of creative artistic assets to like pop out and just have this nice kind of UI. And we know that they're working on it. It just wasn't ready for the demo today, but the game does look significant different again it's all going to come down to percentages and i'll say this about the gameplay demo and i was talking about it i did a twitter spaces right after the town hall finished and i was talking with with uh someone on there about how the thing that stood out to me was the fact that the demo is being run against the bot <laughs> so i immediately the first thing that came to my head was like all right so the game is going to be bottable it's just that's that's what it comes down to now what's interesting about it though is that as the team has been saying not every action is going to lead like there's still going to be some RNG, but not every action is going to be based on the the best probability. So, for example, you may have like a better probability to pass or let's say you might have a better probability to dribble with one player rather than pass. Right. You're, you have a, a higher percentage chance. And so therefore, if, if it was an AI just picking the best uh, chance thing, it would actually dribble. But what would end up happening is if you dribble and then decide to shoot the the two percentages right of dribbling with one player with the, uh, one player and then trying to shoot with the same player might be significantly less than if you were to pass it to another player that is for example like a better offensive player and shoot the ball from there so again we're going all of this is going to like interplay it seems like it's going to be very complicated and complex in a good way right because 
you're going to have all the base stats, but then you're going to be able to add skills in and, you know, who knows in the future uh, if there's going to be different kind of like rule sets. Like the, the rule sets are not going to be available right at the beginning. I have that down under gameplay, but we'll, we'll revisit that in a second. So there's going to be a very dynamic, complex system throughout the game. Each minute, uh, sorry, each turn is roughly three minutes. So let me let me take that back. The game itself shouldn't take any more than like two and a half to three minutes. And what I mean by that is like a, a usual soccer or football game is 90 minutes. Every turn that you take in the game takes three minutes on the clock. So there's 30 turns per game. So essentially what it, what it comes down to is you're going to have 30 turns going back and forth, whether it's you or your opponent that has the ball trying to score. These are probably going to be relatively low scoring games until you just, unless you just absolutely dominate. But even still, you look at like some of the top, you know, soccer or football games around the world and it's like what five zero six zero, so it's not anything too crazy. I think five to six goals is probably doable with that amount of turns. But I gotta say, the gameplay demo, it's it's not quite there. It doesn't quite do it for me yet. But when I think through, and I'm and I'm, I'm honest about this, when I think through what like the Splinterlands UI is. It's like the Splinterlands Battles 1.0 isn't that crazy either, right? So it's about how addictive is the game loop, right? How, how addictive is the entire play session? And I, I'll, I'll say this uh, because I, I, I don't want to come off and like judge a book by its cover, not by any means, right? Because if I'd done that with Splinterlands, I probably wouldn't have played it. But the thing is, I know once I start playing it, if it does have that same kind of addictive game loop or feedback loop, I think it's one of those things where it's just like, ooh, let me let me get one more. The game is two and a half minutes. I got my team here, and it's you know I, different from like Splinterlands teams where you pick a different team every single game. It's just like I want to get my team a win. I want I want to go on a winning streak, or maybe maybe you have a hot streak or something like that with your specific team. That's that's an NFT in and of itself. We talked about that last time. Uh, so you know ultimately, I'm I'm really excited about where the gameplay could go. Like I said, visually it wasn't quite there yet, but there is progress. And I don't want to judge the the whole kind of like UI of it because I think ultimately it comes down to is the game actually exciting to play. And while you won't be able to play head to head necessarily right at the beginning, it'd be really cool. It, sorry, it will be really cool at some point, or at least my hope is where you can challenge someone and actually go back and forth within the game and play defense and do all these different things. And, you know, we're, we're probably a couple of years away from that, but uh, it, it is it is relatively exciting, I will say. Okay, number three, we got to learn a lot more about skills, and it sounds like there is a post coming out sometime next week, or at least that's what Chicklet was teasing. Here's the big thing with skills that I feel like we found out this time around. Sorry if I'm repeating some information, but uh, just because it doesn't come out as often, but skills are going to be the rewards. Uh, they will be NFTs, but they will not be soul bound. You will be able to buy and sell these on the secondary marketplace. Now, here's the thing, though. Skills are going to have charges, meaning that they can only be used X amount of times uh, until they are depleted. Now, when when I say that, that's per per match, right, per game. So you can use a skill and maybe like that skill has X amount of uses within a game. So I want to I want to uh, differentiate between charges and uses. Let's say there's a skill that you, you can use three, four times in a game, you can still do that, but it will take one charge to use it in that game. And Chickla was very specific about uh, uh, talking through that. Now, here's the thing, though. With the charges, you're, there's going to be two options. You will be able to win charges as part of your rewards, or you'll be able to go and buy charges with credits or GLUSD. So... That's actually, I'm, I'm wondering, they didn't actually say the word, but I'm wondering if this is more like a consumable NFT. Like the NFT will be there, but it won't be like loaded, right? Like you'll, you'll have, uh, you know, you'll, you'll win, you'll win one of these different skills and then you can charge it up by paying for it, or you can win more rewards and then use those charges to fill up the, the skills. Again, we're going to get more information on this, but that was something new to me and, Actually, I, I like it. I, I really, really like the fact that this game is not like Splinterlands. It's going to be very different in many ways from gameplay to tokenomics to all these things. Like, I, I'm just very excited to see how it all plays out. The other thing is that skills will also have a stamina cost. And we're, we'll get into that more when we learn more about, like, the players and how that all goes into it. But, you know... You can't, you can't just play forever, right? The stamina is going to be kind of like the ECR at the card level for all of the different player cards. So using a skill will use some of the stamina available. 
All right. Number four, stadiums. Now, this is really exciting. I talked about stadiums on a previous, uh, maybe the previous town hall video, I think, or town hall, five biggest takeaways. I believe I was wrong there. I thought that they were talking about a stadium sale, but uh, I apologize if I misled anyone. This is going to be the community stadiums. There's going to be three of them. And they will each require a different token of the three tokens to stake in those stadiums. And so at least at the beginning, players will like all matches will be done in these stadiums. And, you know, one stadium, you'll be able to stake GLX. Another stadium, you'll be able to stake GLUSD and the last one GLGT. And so the users can essentially profit share from the community stadiums because the users will get 10 percent of the rewards pool that gets paid out. So, you know, two players play, the winner gets, I, I suppose, 90% of whatever the rewards would be, and the, the stadium uh, stakers, we'll, we'll call them that, will get the remaining 10%. Now, that 10% is going to be divided proportionally by how much you have staked over the entire amount staked on that stadium. So here's where it actually gets really exciting, at least, from again, from a tokenomic standpoint, which, you know, this is where I come from, so I really like it. This is this is essentially infinite staking because now you can go in and there's no limit. There's no cap. And if you want to get something out of it, you can go in and stake. And so you might have a lot of people that will buy up a lot of GLUSD or a lot of uh, GLGT or GLX to try and get a lot of, you know, a, a high share of whatever stadium. And I don't know what the rewards are going to look like. You know, 10% of the rewards doesn't seem like very much. And we can try to run the numbers in a separate video. But 10% of the rewards doesn't seem like much, especially when GLX is trading at like half a penny. So it's not going to be anything too crazy. But there will be an opportunity there where the incentive to go and stake in an infinite staking pool could make things really interesting, especially because GLX is hard capped. GLUSD is not hard capped, but it will require the burning of GLX in order to get more. GLGT is the only one that is essentially, you know, we're, we're, that thing's going to be printed into, <laughs> that thing's going to be printed into oblivion, just like vouchers, right? Now, it's not printing as much uh, in terms of vouchers overall. I think we're only getting 12500 per day rather than 20000 but still, uh, I... I'm excited for there to actually be some use case for GLGT that's ongoing in a way that we don't necessarily even have for vouchers right now. So hopefully the, the Splinterlands team can find a way to utilize vouchers in that way. Um, and then they said the stadiums are going to will rotate based on pools. So it's just like they when, when you go and you just choose to do a ranked play, uh, it will automatically assign you to a stadium and it's going to assign you to the stadium that has the, the highest reward pool. And then when that gets depleted, it'll rotate out. So, you know, it, it'll just be a rotating basis. And so if you are only uh, staking within like the GLX pool, you won't earn anything maybe for the the, the times that the, <laughs> that the games are being played on the other two. Okay, number five, a little bit on gameplay, and the, the rest of the stuff is just kind of a hodgepodge, right? Gameplay, uh, marketing, and the miscellaneous. So with gameplay, uh, as I said earlier, there's going to be no rule sets on launch, which I think is okay for a very uh, predetermined short set of time. Because what I think makes Splinterlands so exciting is the simple fact that the games are different, right? Every single time, the game is fresh. So when the game is new for us here on the, the GLG side... It, it's going to be fun. You know, there's going to be a honeymoon period where we won't be tired of it because we'll all be obsessed. But at some point, there will need to have some kind of rule sets. And that'll include weather. That'll include, I don't know, right, city or whatever the case is. But they're not going to have that on launch. So I, I'm okay with that not on launch. But I really, really hope that we can get that soon after or that's like high on the uh, priority roadmap. Ranked play is going to be uh, matched up by the number of fans you have. And if you remember, the number of fans you have is essentially going to be like your rating in Splinterlands. So the higher amount of fans you have, the bigger of a club you are, and you will essentially be matched up with large clubs as well. Now, here's the thing that I found a little disappointing, but there's going to be one global leaderboard to begin with. And this is going to be, they said this is going to be based on the stadium you play in, although then it sounds like there's supposed to be three leaderboards because Z was saying something like, based on the stadium, like how many wins and losses you have in that stadium, that'll be your leaderboard. But they said there's only going to be one global leaderboard, which to me, I, w one thing that I really like about Splinterlands is somebody can come in and just buy enough cards to play at bronze or silver, or gold, whatever they're fancy, right? With this, it's like, okay, well, 
if I just decide to go in and play with all one BCX cards, sure, I'm going to get matched up hopefully against other one BCX card players, but there's no chance for me to go into a leaderboard unless I'm spending the most out of everybody. I'm playing and spending the most out of everybody. So while, you know, one global leaderboard is fine, again, to begin with, I really hope that, that, that they'll add levels to this. And I know the MLS doesn't really have something like the, you know, over in like Europe or in like English, uh, England to be exact, or the UK. Again, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with all this. I know that there's like the Premier League and then there's like the Champions League and then there's, you know, all the things that you can get like uh, relegated or promoted to. So it'd be cool to have something like that within this game, even if there's not necessarily something uh, like a precedent for it within the MLS itself. Um, and then last thing here for the gameplay side, and I guess this isn't really gameplay, but if you remember all of your cards uh, are NFTs, all of your player cards, and then you're going to be able to stake them on team NFTs. And they use the term nesting, I suppose. So you'll be able to essentially grow your team. There'll be like a synergy there uh, as they like play together more. And the cool thing is that the, the NFTs are going to be live on the validator day one. So your team NFTs are going to be on a, you know, well, it's not going to be fully decentralized yet, but they will be on the validators day one. So that's actually going to be really exciting. The other thing is the there's a limited amount of teams per user. They haven't talked exactly about how many teams that's going to be. But um, if this is not something that they cap, then it, it's essentially like inflationary. So you will be able to get more teams, but I believe you're going to have to pay for them. And I'm almost wondering if the franchise license is going to be a way in which they they gate that, right? So you can buy like multiple franchise licenses per account. And again, this is just me guessing. I have no idea. But like if you if you buy like multiple franchise licenses per account, then you can build multiple teams and have, you know, your players go uh, on on whatever team you want them to. Okay, we are moving right along here. Number six, we're into the bonus <laughs> bonus material now. Number six is a marketing update. So we had Chatter on there real quick. And Chatter was talking about two, two specific things, right? He said that they have a Snapchat marketing campaign plan. They had some credit with Snapchat that they haven't used. So they're hoping to use that and get it extended, the, the credit availability, by the end of July. And if they can't, then they'll just, you know, launch some of the, uh, the things uh, right before or, you know. What that says to me is, Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, we are closer to the end of a July launch <laughs> than, than we are to uh, end of August. But either way, I don't really use Snapchat as much. I used to all the time. I still have it on you know, my, my phone and I'll, I'll go in every once in a while. But it's not one of the main areas that I, I go to. And I feel as though it's one of those, uh, it's, a, it's a platform that's geared mainly towards a younger audience. And I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing because at the end of the day, the MLS audience is prob probably skews much younger anyway. And it'd be really cool to get some of these younger fans to be like, oh, you know, instead of like, uh, an Xbox game, I really want to get the card of my favorite player in this, you know, online blockchain game. And I, w I really want to start playing this online blockchain game. So, uh, you know, not that I'm trying to get a bunch of like 12 year olds to come in and play, but it'd be cool if we could appeal to that audience because they're, uh, they don't, they don't necessarily have money, but they, they would be the ones that could get involved in the game and really turn it into more of like a, a cultural thing rather than it just being <laughs> all of us crypto bros uh, that are, are into it. The other thing that Chatter mentioned, he name dropped five hour energy and other partners that they're, they're uh, other partnerships that they are in talks with for things like equipment. And I, 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 I really don't know what else would be in there, but here's the weird thing like chatter is like one of the most tight lipped people that I know. So for him to name drop five hour energy, I was like shocked that he did because it doesn't sound like it's necessarily booked yet, unless maybe it is. But if it's not, it's like they, I guess the team has a lot of partners that are really excited to see what this game can look like. And since it has a much broader appeal rather than something like a Splinterlands, there's there's just companies lining up to find ways in which they can they can advertise to MLS, soccer, football, and 
crypto, you know, crypto users all in like the same go, right? This is a very kind of unique niche of, of people. So again, is five hour energy, uh, will, will that actually happen? I, I have no idea, but again, they were name dropped. I don't know what the other partners are, but it is exciting. I mean, these are, these are real brands. Uh, and you know, uh, this is, this is a real sport with real players. So at the end of the day, I I'm very excited for the platform itself or for goals itself, just because of that. Uh, again, Coming from the Splinterland side, you're never gonna get you know an endorsement for for Grum Flame Blade, right? Like he's he's never he's never gonna get some kind of like Adidas deal, right? It's just that's that's never gonna happen. But within within something like uh, the, the MLSPA or you know Genesis League goals through that partnership with the MLSPA, you never know what kind of things it could lead to that have like real world benefits and real world kind of uh, pullback. Um, okay, cool. Number seven, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up because it's already gone on a little bit longer than I had planned to, but I'm trying to talk as fast as I can without eating my words. So miscellaneous, if you have questions, if you, you know, there's not going to be a town hall every week, but the team or members from the team are planning to do office hours every Friday where you can go in, get some questions answered, maybe get a little alpha. I have no idea, but uh, it'll be good to have these touch points, even if it's, even if they're not official town halls, uh, gameplay won't be managed by the validators. I thought that this was really interesting. So from a scaling standpoint, they want to be able to run as many games as possible. So they're going to run them all on the company servers, but the results will still be published to the blockchain. And what they're planning to do with this is you'll still sign your, your keys for any and all actions that you take, but the gameplay actually be running on a separate server and not on the validators in order to allow for easier scaling. And this is something that Matt said that they want to do and bring back to the Splinterland side as well. So I, I thought that that was happening already, uh, but maybe again, I, I'm not a developer, I'm not, I'm not technically literate. So if this means something to you, I'd love to learn a little bit more about it. I just wanted to share it because, uh, you know, Matt was on the town hall uh, and he did not speak very much. But this is one of the one thing, one of the things that he talked about and got excited about. So uh, I, I paid attention. I was like, OK, uh, I don't understand it, but it sounds like something cool. And it sounds like something they want to bring to Splinter Lens as well. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Still plan. OK, so somebody had asked during the Q&A, do they still plan to burn the MLSPA packs by the end of 2023? And the answer was yes, uh, and that there were plans for there to be another set of packs for the 2024 season based on the 2023 stats. Now, here, here's the thing with the MLSPA deal, <clears throat> as it differs uh, from something like Tower Defense, right? Like I could sit here and we could say, yeah, they said they're going to burn the packs, but they said they were going to burn the packs with Tower Defense too, and that didn't end up happening. Now with this... I'm not trying to say that they would or wouldn't or that they'd go back on their word. I know I know the team is trying to find a creative solution to, for the uh, the tower defense packs. And hopefully they're able to, to find that and share that with us, like the whole alpha beta thing. But with this, uh, with the MLSPA, they are very much, they, there's very much a time constraint here, right? And this is kind of why I've been pushing for or hoping that the game would be out earlier in the season when there was a lot of hype and energy. But with this, it's like, well, they, they kind of have to have new packs for next season anyway. So there is an endpoint for these packs. And whether it stays at the end of 23, 2023, or it goes, you know, sometime into 2024, I have no idea. Right now, I'm going to take them at their word that it's going to end by 2023. And hopefully, with the game coming out by, <clears throat> excuse me, by, by August or end of August, we will be in a position where you'll at least have like four months of gameplay I guess it may not even be play to earn by then, but but gameplay where packs will be available. And is that enough time? It doesn't seem like it. it. Really doesn't seem like it. But if the game is popular and it brings in a lot of people, that could be you know who knows. Maybe there won't even be any packs left by the end of October, right? So, <clears throat> um, and then last thing. Sorry, I'm losing my voice here, so I'm going to wrap this up. Last thing. There was some questions about gold foils and what the value of gold foils will be. Uh, the team, uh, you know, Matt, Aggie, they all kind of chimed in. More rewards. They might have more energy. There's going to be a higher baseline of fans. All this stuff is really unconfirmed, though. Uh, and so I would not make any decisions based on what the team says in a town hall. Wait until there's a post. Just wait until it's official because we've just seen, you know, for, for my non Splinter Lens folks here, we've just seen too many times on the Splinter Lens side where people make financial decisions based on something the team says in a town hall. 
and then it changes when we get to uh, when we get to the actual release of it, and everybody feels salty. So I'm just trying to warn you now. They're trying to share some interesting things. I again. Should they be doing it? Should they not be doing it? I, that's not for me to comment on. They did it, right? And I'm just saying that there's there's a history that sometimes things change. Not even like maliciously. I'm not even saying that the team is trying to like dupe you. I'm just saying like sometimes these things change whether they, they can't implement it or it doesn't make sense or it would lead to an exploit or something like that. So just beware of going all in on these gold foils until and unless we have a post available that gives you more information. And it sounds like we're going to start getting a lot more information on a more regular basis with the with the office hours with the posts and hopefully with you know whenever the next town hall will be sometime in july again would be my guess mid july but that is all i have for you guys in this video let me know your thoughts in the comments below i will catch you all in the next one and see you around the game take care